Oh, can you guys mute yourselves? Oh, of course. Hi, and welcome to Off Chain with Jimmy Song. Um, uh, I uh, I have uh, well, oh okay. So anyway, uh, I I have a couple of very special guests uh, that are going to talk about the Hurricane Irma um, stuff, and afterwards we'll get into some discussions, but. Uh, yeah, let's let's get to the Hurricane Irma donation uh, stuff from the cryptocurrency community. I think this will be very interesting. Um, and uh, who should we go to first? Marguerite, uh, you want to go first? Sure. All right. Hi, guys. Uh, thanks, Jimmy, for having us on your show. And uh, oh, can I just ask a quick question? Did your wife get the kitchen yet? Not yet, not yet. We're we're looking into it. We're uh we're working on getting some bids and things like that. It takes forever these things. So I I don't I don't think anything's happening for another six months. <laughs> when we were at the kitchen, because Bitcoin was just going on a bull run, but um, <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, um, I so we just launched this um, Hurricane Irma campaign, the fundraiser, and we started working on it. I think about five days ago and the team just threw, threw together this website where, and we partnered up with Bittrex. So any cryptocurrency can go towards this cause. And then we are putting that directly to the center um, of disaster philanthropy and then direct relief and habitat for humanity. Um, so I haven't heard of a different campaign going on right now for Bitcoin or any cryptocurrency. Um, Bittrex is the escrow, so they're holding all the funds, and um, when the campaign is over on the 19th, then those funds are going 100% to those three different groups that are right now boots on the ground um, working to help these people that have just had their lives turned upside down. Yeah, um, and uh, we also have joining us uh, the uh, CEO of Pinkcoin, I think. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, why, why don't you int introduce yourself, Danny? You're going to have to unmute yourself. First. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> I'm the founder of Pinkcoin. My name is Danny Johnson. You may know me as Crypto Casey. Um, so as Margarita just mentioned, that we have uh, started a disaster relief campaign to help those that are affected by Hurricane Irma. The website is relief.with.pink, and you can donate with any cryptocurrency. That is traded on Bitrix. Bitrix was asked, ex, acting as the escrow on our behalf, um, and we just think that we have a good platform to allow people to fund these causes that are um, large world issues that maybe aren't being put at the forefront in the crypto community. So we are uh, using our platform and our um, technology to help fund these causes, and along with funding the donation donations to these three great charities we're incentivizing donors to um, the largest single donor calling crypto has donated a lifetime membership to the gambit trading group which is absolutely priceless the, the group is literally closed you can't buy in if you wanted to in addition to the the lifetime membership of gambit trading group he's uh, contributed an hour of his time for one-on-one -on -one coaching for the largest donor. Additionally, to the largest community uh, donation, which right now Pinkcoin is, community is destroying the competition. Um, you, Jimmy Song, have been so gracious in allowing the, the development team of the, the single largest uh, community donation to come on your show in the future, next week or beyond, to uh, showcase their their platform, to, uh, to, shill, <laughs> to shill their coin, more or less. And uh, on top of that, we have um, actually just today, Crypto Graf um, Graffiti has given us uh, a limited edition piece of art that we're going to give to a random uh, a random donator. So you don't have to be the largest donator. You can be any donator. You can have donated to any single amount and be eligible for a prize. As well as uh, us, the Pinkcoin community, we're going to be giving away five different uh, pink coin swag bags from shop.with.pink to random donators that have contributed at all. So uh, you can donate and 
and win some some cool prizes uh, in the process. So it's not just about um, about winning something for yourself, but it's about contributing to those who need it. And we just feel like we have a, a good platform to do that. And our partnership with Bitrix um, and being the escrow is helping alleviate any concern that it's not going to go to the end user and that it's going to be going to get scammed. Bitrix is literally holding all the funds. We have access to none of the wallet. We just have API keys to to read the transactions and the balances. So there is 1,000% certainty that uh, the funds are going to go to a good cause. And what what crypto uh, coins can people use to uh, donate? Yeah, so legitimately any coin that is traded on Bitrix.com. So mm -hmm. if you want to if you want to contribute Ethereum or Zcash or Monero or um, Black coin, or uh, I guess Evergreen coin just uh, gave us a donation today. Um, Decred, any of your favorite altcoins, you can contribute them to donate, or uh, sorry, relief.with.pink. And um, you, could, you can either donate anonymously by pressing the donate now button, or you can sign up for an account, which is literally only giving your email so we can track you, uh, giving a, um, ID or a nickname so that we you can be publicly broadcast and a password so that um, you may claim the prizes if you are eligible for prizes. So um, they can uh, so donate anonymously. They can if they if they so desire. However, if they want to be eligible for the prizes, they need to register and include their email addresses. There's no invasive uh, questions. There's no what's your name, what's your address, none of that. Just give me an, give us an email, give us a password so you can log in and click donate now, and that's it. Okay. And Marguerite, uh, what, where, which causes are these, uh, are the donations going to go to? So we have the Center for Disaster Philanthropy, Habitat for Humanity, and then a Direct Relief. Okay. So and are, are, you, are you going to make a puzzle or anything uh, interesting? <laughs> oh man. Uh, well, I'm actually already working on a puzzle, but oh. not for this. Um, no, but but I've been really excited. I mean, the community that has stepped up and put put items forward to incentivize donations has been really awesome. I mean, it's awesome. Um, yeah, Cryptography. I think he just tweeted out that art piece. So if you guys want to see it, it's on his Twitter, and he has details about it. Um, and actually, I have his artwork right behind me. So it's awesome. It's just like it is just like one of these pieces, um, except it's a different print. But um, I mean, his work is going to be really valuable one day, guys. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, isn't it uh, a limited edition of 25, and it's yeah. uh, Bitcoin on a Federal Reserve bag? Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's amazing. And uh, just real quick, shout out um, the Twitter handles of the organization we're we're going to be donating to is at Habitat underscore org um, at funds for the number four disaster and at direct relief mm -hmm. check this out okay and uh, you guys can follow both of these guys uh, Marguerite is coin artist on Twitter and uh, Danny is I guess pink coin official or pink coin underscore or something like that on pink Twitter underscore, also mm -hmm. crypto Casey and okay. uh, Marguerite's coin underscore artist right okay well thank you very much uh, hopefully you guys can donate and show um, you know, I, I guess if you have some extra Bitcoin cash or something like that, maybe you might want to donate it, but convert it to Bitcoin or some other altcoin first, uh, whatever uh, coin that you want to see on the show. So uh, Bittrex. So you don't have, uh, have the developers on your show? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So wh whoever's developers you want me to interview, I guess it could be Bitcoin Cash if you want, like, if you want to do that. <laughs> Metal Mix on, on here. Um, I, I, we could we could certainly try to get him and, and, and things like that. So, yeah, entirely up to you. Um, it does look like Pink Coin is winning by a mile. Uh, yeah, it, last time I checked, I think it's, uh, let's see, I, I am it's going to. Over $10, right? yeah, it's a, the, uh, the pr total number of donations right now is 11555 US dollars. Yeah. And about, everything but about a thousand dollars of that is from Pink. Um, so yeah, it looks like I'm gonna have like Danny on again or something if yeah, this uh, I mean, this holds. So that we have the most uh, generous and kind community out there. <laughs> I think that <laughs> shots fired. Um, obviously, uh, all right. Open well, challenge to any crypto. Please, uh, please beat us. We, we welcome <laughs> it. It's all going to good cause.
All right, good stuff. Uh, thank you, guys. Uh, I, I really hope this goes well, and I, I implore this community. I mean, there, there are a lot of people that are going to be displaced as a result of this, so I'm sure any donation uh, to any of these worthy organizations would be very useful. Um, um, yeah, yeah, thank you for- Thanks. Thank for, you very uh, much, Junior, yeah. for having us on. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you, uh, right. elevating us on your platform. Yeah, no problem. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> All right, they have dropped off. All right, great. Now, um, I, I, I really do think it's it's going to be a good uh, thing for everyone if, uh, you know, if we can show that Bitcoin is, and, you know, other crypto can, you know, donate to these things. Anyway, let's talk a little bit uh, about breaking Bitcoin. Um, I, obviously, I spoke there and I, uh, and I moderated a panel, but... Uh, Probably what everyone wants to talk about is uh, is what happened with JJ. Uh, and uh, it, for those of you not in the know, what what happened was um, JJ. He's the uh, creator of Bitcoin. He works at Purse.io. Um, he uh, he gave a presentation where he showed an exploit uh, for Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, probably a ton of other altcoins. Um, but yeah, it's 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 a very interesting exploit. I, I found it very technically interesting. Uh, but he he had uh, sort of uh, disclosed it to Peter Wola and uh, I guess Dedelnix and a bunch of other people, um, including roast beef um, uh, for different implementations and stuff like that, uh, because they were vulnerable to this particular exploit that he found. Um, and Elizabeth Stark and Peter Todd were quite um, annoyed, uh, well, probably angry, I, I think angry is a fair word, at, at uh, what he had done because uh, though he had revealed it to the various people, um, the actual uh, you know, clients hadn't fully incorporated them. So for example, uh, it turns out that some of the efficiency gains uh, from uh, you know, per TX output uh, <clears throat> storage of UTXOs that Peter Willa had done for 0 .1 .15 would actually fix this stuff. Uh, but you know, it 0 .15 0 isn't out yet. And you know, uh, JJ had revealed this on uh, Sunday. So uh, Peter Todd was especially concerned, and he asked him several times about, uh, you know, did you tell everybody that you were going to reveal it today? And you know, JJ sort of. I uh, said, well, I revealed the stuff to them two months ago, so a few months ago, so that's kind of good enough. Um, you know, as Elizabeth Stark has asserted that he told her that he wouldn't speak about this particular thing. I haven't gotten the story from JJ yet, so I don't know if it's miscommunication or if uh, if something else happened and he was purposefully sort of uh, revealing this thing. Uh, but let's let's get into a little bit about what the actual exploit was. Um, essentially, what what he did was take advantage of the fact that when you're spending um, uh, from when you have a transaction, you have first of all inputs and outputs, and for every input, it, it's really an output of another transaction that hasn't been spent yet. It's it's called the unspent transaction output or UTXO for short, and uh, what uh, Bitcoin had done before 0 0.15.0, .0, that is everything before it, like including 0 0.14.2, is for every one of these UTXOs, it loads the entire transaction instead of just the UTXO. So if uh, if each transaction is part of, of an enormous transaction, it, it, in, it loads the enormous transaction and finds that particular UTXO and then loads it. So uh, what what JJ had done was he he created a ton of these enormous transactions, and then uh, and then created another enormous transaction with a lot of inputs that reference all these other transactions and sort of bloating the memory. And uh, and normally most uh, most you know uh, people's nodes don't have more than say like eight gigabytes of memory. So if he can sort of bloat that to like 10 gigabytes, it, uh, the the entire thing crashes because it's, you know, I don't think there's any disk swap or anything like that. So um, he, he, he found that as an exploit. Now it turns out <clears throat> since Bitcoin has a lot of different implementations, some implementations 
were not affected, but other ones were, um, including Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin, and uh, you know, I guess Bitcoin Cash, uh, though that's a different chain. All of them were affected by this, and uh, and he had you know notified them and you know done sort sort of like this disclosure thing, uh, but you know he didn't reveal to them, I guess, uh, that he was going to reveal it on Sunday. So that's that's where Elizabeth and Peter got pretty upset. Uh, but essentially, uh, you know, the, everything is fixed as part of 0.15.0 because Peter Willa actually had been working on this before JJ even found this exploit. So it, it's such a general and useful um, upgrade to Bitcoin um, that it ends up just sort of rendering this exploit null because uh, it's a per TX output. Uh, so each UTXO is stored on its own instead of like as part of a much larger transaction, most of which might be already spent. Um, and, you know, like JJ kind of showed it. Um, the thing about that exploit is that it does require a lot of transactions in order to work. And it's, uh, you know, he estimated how much it would cost. It would cost a lot of money because you, you need a lot of blockchain space in order to execute it. You need all these like giant transactions with a lot of outputs first in order to be able to execute it reasonably. And, uh, and because Bitcoin already has sort of like 100K uh, per transaction rule that's sort of soft forked in there. It won't get, I mean, it's it's not really a soft fork. Well, it is. Uh, most nodes won't relay transactions that are bigger than 100 kilobytes. Uh, what, what ends up happening is that it's, uh, you know, you, you have to store all of these transactions throughout a long period of time. And then you have like this mega transactions that's, that, that's spending from each of these 100 kilobyte uh, transactions and sort of maximizes the amount of memory needed uh and you know it's a very expensive exploit and uh and to my knowledge there there aren't really good candidate transactions to be able to do that and it'll cost the attacker a lot of money uh so it, it, it isn't being on bitcoin it, done on bitcoin same for uh it looks like bitcoin cash um though you know fees are very very small um and uh you know, like they have much larger blocks and a lot more block space, this would be a lot easier to pull off on Bitcoin Cash. Uh, but, you know, th this is something to consider. Um, it's it's also interesting because pretty much every other, e every altcoin out there is also going to have to upgrade as well. They're, they're going to have to figure this out because, um, you know, if you, if you don't, if you aren't sort of upgrading to a per TX output and you're sort of a clone of Bitcoin, well, you're you're going to have the same exact problem. These UTXOs are going to be really uh, can can be a part of really large transactions. So that that can be a pretty big problem. And I wonder if there will be uh, people just sort of for the lulls, um, sort of doing that because mo many of these altcoins have like almost no transaction fee and you can you can you can do whatever it is that you want um you know as as far as transactions you can you know uh maximize the number of outputs basically on these like uh large transactions um and it, it will be interesting to see if uh if people sort of bother uh using this exploit on coins that don't uh don't sort of heed this warning. Uh, we we know, for example, that a lot of these coins have uh, have very little development going on, and this may be actually a great way to find out which ones are uh, aren't aren't being updated. Uh, is if if somebody sort of does this exploit. But uh, I mean, that said, uh, you know, th this was sort of like the big kerfuffle um, uh, going on uh, on you know, during the Breaking Bitcoin conference. Um, I, I, I thought, like, it, it was a really fun conference, personally, for me, the, the best one I've been at. Uh, you know, I, I, I was at Construct 2017 earlier this year, and that was pretty fun for me, except, yeah, I don't really care about Ethereum. So it was it was kind of, um, like, anytime something Ethereum-related came up, I kind of went off to the side and just sort of uh, hung out with other Bitcoin people and just talked about different Bitcoin things. Um, but yeah, it, it, it was uh, this one, every, almost everything I, I wanted to go to. And, you know, almost everyone I talked to, it was, it was very uh, much on topic. There weren't people going, oh, you know, have you heard about my latest ICO or random companies that are sponsoring that, you know, you know frankly, I, I, I didn't really care about. Uh, you know, so it was really good in that way. Um, 
and you know, I, I really didn't feel like there were any scams there, uh, which which is saying something because, you know, uh, these other <laughs> a lot of other conferences attract scams like crazy. So um, yeah, I was very happy about that. All right, let's uh, let's go to some uh, uh, questions. Uh, let's see. I am going to sort of oh, man. I wish I had some help. <laughs> someone to uh, someone to you know talk about this. Wow, so many people come. Uh, yeah, commenting on random stuff. Not not real questions. All right, let's let's go back to Twitter. I think I have a bunch of. Uh, Twitter thing, uh, tw Twitter questions from my tweets earlier today. So let's go to those. Uh, fee estimation. All right. All right. Where can we tune in? Obviously, right here. Um, what are the top risks that scare you for real and top risks per perceived as real that you think aren't really that scary? Um, I think the perceived risks are something like the 2x hard fork. Um, I'm, I used to be scared of that, but I'm not that scared anymore. And part of that is based on what I talked about in my opening talk on at Breaking Bitcoin. And it's that uh, I, I really believe that Bitcoin is anti-fragile. And it isn't anti-fragile because, you know, there's some magical code in there or something. It's it's anti-fragile because we have a lot of developers and that makes it anti-fragile. There's a lot of people that can respond and make the whole system better whenever there are actual attacks against it. Um, and you know, Fork is, is sort of like this un destabilizing thing a little bit, uh, but in a way that makes it a whole lot better because you, you have to immunize against it. Uh, and the developers are really the, the ones that are immunizing it. Uh, and I'm not just talking about core developers, the wallet developers, the developers that are exchanges and uh, payment processors, all they're all sort of immunizing. And, and it's a good thing. I, I think that's um, that's kind of why, you know, we, we saw price rise when, you know, Bitcoin cash forked. Um, as far as uh, what scares me for real, um, I'm not sure. I, I'm still trying to think what what would cause Bitcoin to get worse. Um, and I guess it would be maybe like stagnation, something like that. Uh, you know, I, I I think we we saw that a little bit during uh, maybe like the two year you know bear market. Uh, part of that I think was because we actually didn't have that much drama, which is kind of a weird thing to say, but that's that that may actually be the case um yeah all right let's take a look at some of this other stuff um do you think the dos vector disclosure was unethical i i mean ethics is this weird topic it, it kind of assumes sort of a common morality and i'm not sure we have that in crypto there's no like 10 commandments of crypto or something like that that everyone's already signed with blood or something like that i think um you know, it's. I, I think there are standards. Um, did JJ follow them to the letter? Probably not. But was he within his rights to disclose it? Probably. I mean, you can you can condemn them all you want, but unless there's sort of a common morality that everyone agrees to, it's kind of hard to, or that he's that JJ agreed to beforehand. It's kind of hard to. Uh, you know, condemn him for it. Now, if if he you know lied to Elizabeth Sark and said I'm not going to give this specific presentation, but he did, I think you know we, you can condemn him for lying. Um, but I mean, I don't know. Like it, it it's hard to say something is unethical um, without knowing the actual moral system that we're talking about, and that's that's kind of a very philosophical discussion that we need to have in order to have a good answer to that question, if that makes sense. Anyway, great questions, uh, uh, Francis. I, 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 I met him over the weekend, by the way, and I, I like him. Um, all right, so what are the general principles, values, philosophies, goals, roadmaps you think most participants shared with near unanimity? Uh, the, I, I assume this is at Breaking Bitcoin. I, I definitely think... Um, uh, there were a lot of uh, general principles. I think uh, a, a lot of people felt like, you know, 
uh, security and a more focused event like this was uh, was a lot better than maybe some of these other events where you just sort of bring in anybody and everybody that will pay. Um, and that that's, uh, I think, kind of not good for anybody, right? Like if you're going to have an Ethereum summit, have an Ethereum summit. And if you're going to have a Bitcoin event, have a Bitcoin event. If you're going to have an ICO event, have an ICO event. I think that's a lot better because you're going to bring in the crowd that's that you can talk to. Um, if I go to an event with all three, that's, I mean, I, it's only like a third of the people that I'm going to be interested in talking with. So, you know, I, I think you have to balance that very, uh, like, you know, you, you want a more focused event. I think more people will show up. I think a lot of organizers of conferences tend to be very scared that if they focus it too much, then, you know, all these other people that want to come aren't going to feel welcome. Well, yeah, but you're, if you if you widen the net too much, then a lot of people that are focused on their project aren't going to want to come either. So I, I, I think there are pros and cons, but at least for me, uh, that seemed to be a sentiment that a lot of people shared. Um, many have said, like myself, that it was like one of the more enjoyable uh, Bitcoin conferences that they've been to, largely because the crowd was, you know, were, was a bunch of people that I wanted to talk to and not like, you know, half the people I want to avoid, half the people I want to talk to, you know, uh, and that's a good thing. All right, uh, let's see. What is 0.15? Uh, yeah, good question. Uh, it, it's the latest release of Bitcoin, and that's uh, that's coming out probably in the next couple of days. Uh, it's already been tagged on GitHub. I think they're doing the build process right now. Um, and once they have signed packages and things like that, it will be under releases in their in the Bitcoin Core uh, GitHub repository, and you you'll be able to download it. Uh, if you can't wait, you can just compile from source. Uh, not very hard, and it's already been tagged, so you you don't have to worry about uh, new things going in. That would be tag lag zero that fifteen that one. So uh, lots of really new uh, cool new features. Um, just a preview for you guys. John Newberry has some. Uh, really cool articles that are going to be coming out about like some some of the new features. Uh, he he, by the way, had a, had a great article on fee estimation and how Bitcoin Core does it. He's going to follow that up with sort of uh, what zero dot one five changes. Um, and it's it's really clever how uh, fee estimation is done already. But it's going to get even more clever with some more logic added in. All right, so let's uh, let's look at some more questions. Uh, Let's see. <clears throat> I already answered that question. Uh, was there any discussion about the environmental issues regarding intense amount of electricity used to mine, maintain the blockchain? No, not really. I think that's just sort of, uh, yeah, I, 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 I don't agree with the premise that Bitcoin is using way too much electricity or something like that. If you look at almost any money system, they use more electricity than Bitcoin. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to assert that this is true of fiat, of gold, of uh, almost anything else. Um, and the costs are not readily apparent. They tend to be hidden. Uh, so if you have the fiat system, for example, there's all these banks and things that you have to set up in order to distribute money and hold money for people and create money in like not just like M1 money, but M2 money and things like that. Um, and that is an enormous cost, right? Who's, who's going to go build a building? Who's going to, you know, pay the salaries of all these uh, people? Uh, and, you know, who's going to make the computer systems and the bank vaults and all these other things that these other these banks need? Oh, well, you know, they don't come for free. And, you know, these they all need electricity, too. And, you know, there's there's an entire industry uh, that lives kind of off the fiat system that you don't really need in Bitcoin. Um, and, you know, most people don't think about that because that's not a direct cost like electricity is in Bitcoin. Um, but, you know, it's uh, it's not really something that I, I think people really talk about. It's not really a security issue. Though, you know, I mean, maybe, maybe we could talk about how if you lose electricity on Earth in some way, maybe like a, I don't know, uh, some some somebody can do some sort of attack that takes out an energy grid or something. Um, that, that could be interesting, but nobody uh, unfortunately talked about that. Um, but yeah, the, I, I don't really agree with the premise of that question. All right, um, will Core be ready to implement the proof of work change if needed? Um, 
that's a good question. Well, what does needed really mean? Um, and we did talk about this on the mining panel that I had, and uh, and I don't, uh, you know, uh, I don't know if there's like a really good reason. I, I suppose if you're attacked, then you can implement. So uh, you would need to implement the proof of work change to get out of that attack, and that would be a hard fork, and it would be you know, massively destabilizing. Uh, but, you know, obviously that, that would require some sort of state actor getting some significant amount of mining hash power so that the current proof of work is rendered useless. Uh, would that happen? Um, possibly. And what, what would the core devs do? Well, um, I know for a fact that Luke Dash Jr. had at one point created uh, Kessack as the proof of work for Bitcoin Unlimited, I think it was. And he put that pull request in, and of course they closed it. They were like, we're not changing our proof of work. Uh, but it really wasn't that much code, you know. Um, and it's entirely possible to be, uh, you know, he, ha he has it in his back pocket and he can implement it very quickly. Um, so, you know, I, I, I don't think it would be very hard to do it. Uh, it would be sort of the testing around it that would probably take a while but in sort of that emergency like situation i think uh i think you you do minimal testing and or just enough testing to know that it's not going to completely break it because it's kind of already broken if a state actor has uh something else and as long as it's better than that you sort of release it and that's that's kind of how it would go but as far as like core developers being ready um i would say that they would be pretty much ready um and you know depending on what sort of uh, you know, new hash function that they would choose. I, I uh, you know, that that I, I think could be done fairly quickly. Uh, how long does it take for new versions like 0.15.0 to be fully implemented? What do you think about Jay Garzik's adapting dot fifteen to Segwit two X? Well, all right. So, uh, fully implemented. I guess by that you mean sort of uh, like being propagated along on, on the network. And that's entirely up to the user. Uh, you can download the 0 0.15.0 and run it if you want. You don't have to, you have no obligation to. And that's part of the system is that there are nodes that are running really old software and you have every right to do that. No one is forcing you to upgrade. Um, so it could take something like two or three years. Now, given sort of the importance of 0 0.15.0, I suspect it's going to, uh, penetrate the market a lot faster than maybe some of the other releases, uh, especially given some of the peering stuff and some of the dangers around, you know, if uh, 2x hard forks um, being connected to only 2x nodes, that that would be kind of dangerous because you could be isolation attacked. Um, but, you know, I fully implemented it. It takes a while. Um, what do you think about Jay Garzik's adapting dot fifteen to Segwit two X? I I think that's like the normal thing to do. I think he's doing a merge instead of a rebase. I would prefer a rebase because that's a lot easier because you you have your diffs. But I mean, whatever. He he's he's used to merges and that's that'll probably be easier. I I hope he does it uh, fairly soon. Um, I I have heard that he's going to sort of take out some of the quote unquote poison pills and we'll we'll see that what exactly that I, I, I imagine he means like taking out sort of the anti peering stuff uh with respect to Segwit two X notes. Um but yeah that that's I I hope he does. Um you know like that'll make Bit, uh, Bitcoin two X I guess better. Uh will the two X hard hard fork happen? Um I'm guessing yes. I'm going to guess yes. Um uh and that's because you you really don't need more than a small amount of hash power to desire it in order for it to happen. Bitcoin Cash showed us that, um, and you know there are enough people that I think want that want two X to happen for that to happen. Uh, of course, it could be that you know some people think, hey, you know what, like two X. It doesn't have enough momentum, and and you know it was supposed to be a single chain and. I'd, I'd rather just stick with the other thing if that's the case. Um, that may happen too. I don't. I don't know. It's it's hard to say. Uh, I will. Uh, I I'm. I wouldn't bet on that prediction. Uh, but you know, it's it's entirely possible. 
Where can we find links to donation sites? How many coins are there like Bcash that all BTC holders can split and sell? Um, well, I mean, it depends on the number of hard forks, obviously. The donation sites are um, relieved that with that pink. Uh, quick thoughts on JP Morgan's diamond. Um, uh, I mean, I don't think he knows what he's talking about, so I'm, I'm, I don't know. I don't really like to respond to people that don't know what they're talking about. It's kind of like arguing with a child or something. Um, I've done that, uh, and it's it's not. It generally tends to be not very productive if the other person in the conversation doesn't know what they're talking about, right? Like, um, and you know, he can have his opinion. He's he's got every right to it. Uh, but you know, until you demonstrate that you know what you're talking about, it's the the criticism isn't really that. I don't know why people would listen. I, I guess it's because he's like the president of Morgan Stanley. Uh, but I don't know. I, I don't. I don't really give it a second thought. It's not like Morgan Stanley is a big part of the Bitcoin community or anything. Uh, I mean, I, I'd rather you know look at criticism from people that actually know what they're talking about. Um, so yeah, I don't. I don't really care. Uh, all right, let's uh, let's go to the chat a little bit and take a look at uh, some of the comments there um, or questions there. All right, let's see. Anyone? Well, there's no super chat, so it's kind of hard to read some of these. If I install a full node, do I get faster transactions? Um, like, I, I guess you're asking, will you get in a block faster? No, that's entirely dependent on your fees. Um, although I guess SPV wallets can have connectivity issues, so if you're running a full node, you might have better connectivity, but almost certainly not. No. Um, doesn't Big Main make like 99% of ASIC chips? No, they make about 70. Uh, Bitfury and Kanan manufacture a lot of other ones. Um, all right, so what other questions do we have here? Um, Uh, that's not right. Uh, Jimmy, run a class in New York City. I'll look into that. How did Bitcoin first kick off after the white paper was released? Um, well, the Genesis block was created by Satoshi, and he had some data in there um, about, you know, Chancellor does something or other. It was basically complaining about, um, you know, the current fiat system. But that's that's how he kicked it off. Um, you missed the super chat. I missed the super chat. All right, so I will keep scrolling up until I find the super chat. Uh, what is the consensus on how people feel about leaking that weakness about BTC? Uh, well, there isn't a consensus, I imagine. I mean, there, there are plenty of people complaining about it on Reddit and Twitter or whatever, but I mean, I don't think there's a consensus, much like most things on uh, uh, in Bitcoin. Um, you know, that's it's everyone's opinion. You have your right, uh, the right to your opinion. Um, yeah, I, I don't think there's really any consensus at all. All right, uh, I had asked on Twitter how banning, limiting, caching in BTC to C and Y will affect miners in China. Um, I don't think I understand that question. I'm sorry. Uh, <clears throat> let's see. Does the UTXO bug cause any issues with the potential double spend or anything of that nature? Absolutely not. Um, it's not really a bug. It's just the way that it was implemented. Um, and one of the cool things, by the way, in uh, JJ's talk was he made a distinction between implementation bugs and protocol bugs. And I was trying to uh, write a good article about it, uh, except I couldn't think of really good examples other than the ones he cited. So, you know, uh, it's, it's a very interesting and useful distinction, I think, going forward. Uh, will 7 nanometer chips, uh, like from Japan Samsung, shift the power of ASIC mining away from Bitmain? Great question. Um, 
So current generation is like 16 nanometer. I think Bit Fury may be uh, on 14 nanometer, but the next generation is 7 nanometer. And if you don't know that much about chip design, know that uh, the smaller the process is, the the smaller the chip can be, less heat dissipation, and you know the more efficient it can be, and the better overall the, it it is. Um, and seven nanometer is obviously much smaller than sixteen. So you and you know before Bitcoin was on twenty eight, and before that it was on forty two, and before that it was like at sixty five, and before that it was like at one forty two, and so on. And each generation it gets much and more and more faster as uh, as you use like a smaller process to do it. Uh, will will it shift it? Uh, it depends. I mean, I know for a fact that Bitmain is working on seven nanometer, right? Like they have amazing chip designers. This is why they have like such a huge lead in ASIC manufacturing. And then Alex Petrov actually commented during the mining panel that even if Intel or one of these like giant chip manufacturers came into the Bitcoin mining space, it would take them about a year to catch up to all the different techniques that uh, these mining manufacturers have found. And it's it's not just a matter of, oh, okay, well, we'll make them too. You, you, there, there are certain things about uh, you know mining manufacturing that you have to know, um, especially like you know, the components that you use and like the chips and how you sort of power them and things like that, that, that aren't obvious. Um, and, you know, maybe, maybe you can hire somebody away from Bitmain and gain some of those trade secrets or whatever. But oftentimes these things are, you know, encumbered by patents. And this is why, you know, in chip design, uh, you know, you, you have to be very, very careful. And it, it's, it's very hard to manufacture your own stuff uh, you know, that that's comparable without, you know, violating some of this. Uh, and you, you have to be really clever, and this is why it costs so much. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, it may shift the power of ASIC mining away from Bitmain, but, um, you know, it may not, because very, very frankly speaking, Bitmain has a huge lead, right? Like, they have a lot of really good relationships, and they've figured out this whole... Um, manufacturing miners thing, uh, especially with respect to the chips. And the chips are clearly the most important part of a mining uh, of mining equipment. So yeah, great question, VCVC. VC. All right, let's, uh, let's keep going up. Um, ah, yes, the bad virus. Hey, Jimmy, isn't the term altcoin now an unfashionable term used by 2013 Bitcoin maximalists? Or do you still think the term still has objective credibility? Um, I use it because uh, that's just my perspective. Uh, you know, Bitcoin versus altcoin. Bitcoin is the main coin. Uh, altcoin is, are, are other coins. Uh, it's just a useful way to group everything else other than Bitcoin. Uh, I mean, you may object to it as sort of a pejorative term. Uh, I personally don't see it as a pejorative term. Uh, I, I think it's just sort of a useful distinction because Bitcoin came first. It's kind of like saying uh, initial or, uh, you know, like initial part of the series that's like the first one and subsequent, you know, uh, things of a series. Well, that's everything else, and that's that's perfectly legitimate as a use of the English language. Um, and I think that's fine. You know, Bitcoin is the one that came first. All coins are everything that came after. I think that's perfectly useful, um, especially since we know where a lot of the innovation happened is on the first one, right? Like, I mean, what's you know, you can talk about the initial issue of Spider Man versus subsequent issues of Spider Man, like. What's the distinction there? Well, that 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 could be useful. Um, but you know, I, I think that's a. I, I I don't see it as a pejorative term. Uh, I think some other people may because they're you know part of other, they're part of uh, the many uh, coins and all coins. So you know, I I don't know. All right, uh, let's look at some other questions and then uh, we will get wrapping up in about fifteen minutes. So. Uh, are you in the bathroom? That's not right. Uh, no, I am in a hotel room, and uh, I am in New York City because I have some clients here, and I, I'm, uh, you know, I have to meet them. So I'm not at home in Austin. I'm not in Paris. So I'm sort of in between. All right. Question: When do you expect the S curve of user adoption? What conditions must be met before you expect the S curve? How will you know it is here when it arrives? Uh, great question. Unfortunately. 
I don't really know. Um, I, I think when you start seeing people, seeing most people will sort of, you know, getting Bitcoin, not just asking about it. Um, I think that's when you'll see, you know, when, when the sweet part of the S curve is going up. I, I mean, it's kind of like any technology. I don't remember if, uh, if you were there in like 99, 2000, that's at least for me when I started to see that, you know, it, one year it was like less than half my friends had a, had a cell phone. The next year it was most of my friends had a cell phone. And that's that's the sweet part of the S-curve, the, the steep rise there. Um, and I imagine Bitcoin will be the same way. At one point, it'll be a minority of your friends. And then it'll, at, at another point, it'll be a majority of your friends because that's sort of how S-curves go. Um, I don't think we're anywhere near that. Uh, so I, I don't imagine that to be the case. Um, sorry about the, the light there. Um, but yeah, it's uh, that that's how I would, think of it what other alts will atomic swaps include do you think that is a way of making cryptos more decentralized um well in order to do uh, atomic swaps at least over lightning you need to support segwit on your altcoin um so the only ones that do i think are litecoin and a few other ones i can't remember which ones they are but you can do atomic swaps there um do you think that is a way of making cryptos more decentralized i don't Think so I don't think I, I think they're orthogonal concepts um, so uh, can fungibility be attained with atomic swaps and using a different blockchain like Litecoin would privacy be better implemented on a Bitcoin sidechain yeah privacy absolutely would be better implemented on a uh, Bitcoin sidechain that's kind of what Mimblewimble is about and that's uh, you know that that would allow a lot more privacy uh, right now what a lot of people do is they uh, they transfer to Monero do a couple trans transactions on Monero and then transfer back to Bitcoin and that's not a bad way to do it uh, but you know uh, using a side chain you you don't you're not subject to slippage or whatever so um, so that that might be a way to do it especially if there's something like mimble wimble and cut throughs and things like that um, I haven't really written any articles on mimble wimble but that might be something to talk about in another episode do you think all investment in mining asics wallets channels get etc give Bitcoin intrinsic value, or can all that stuff ultimately be used to proliferate another coin that could replace Bitcoin? Um, I, I, I mean, hard question. I guess what you're talking about is most of that stuff can be reused for something like Bitcoin Cash, for example, right now. Um, but you know, you still need to change off some stuff. Uh, yeah, I mean, it could be used right now. Most, it, it would be pretty hard, though. It would be have to be almost exactly Bitcoin. So, in which case, it would be Bitcoin. Um, you know, if it, if it was widely used, some some separation between Bitcoin and this hypothetical coin would be would would be required. All right. Uh, yeah, I already looked at that one. Um, I already looked at that one. All right. Um, yeah, it looks like we're we're sort of uh, running out of questions. So I think this might be a good time. Um, yeah, I I, I I would love to uh, talk more about different things uh, on the next episode. I would love to um, hear from you on Twitter about what sort of guests I can have next. I did ask uh, Dead on Nix. Um, he's the He's the main developer for Bitcoin ABC. If he'd want to be on my show at some point, um, I, I also thought Eric Vosco was uh, was very interesting with his views, and I, I would love to have him on my show at some point. Um, and I, I, I think he's open to it as well. Um, yeah, and uh, and you know, obviously there are uh, lots of other people that I, I'm going to have on in the future. Um, and you know, check out the Pink Coin uh, fundraiser. Uh, I would love to see other, um, you know. Uh, coins uh, try to beat them <laughs> and I promise I'll be nice well I don't know maybe I won't be nice uh, it, depending on which coin wins I'll, I'll definitely ask questions about your coin and say all right what's your value proposition um, honestly I haven't read the white paper on most of these coins so um, that's that's going to factor in and you know if they're they're on the show and I, I probably won't know that much about it I'll and I'll ask them about it um, but yeah, uh, thank you for uh, uh, joining me tonight. Uh, it was uh, it was a good show. I, I enjoyed your questions, and I wanted to have a good sign off. And somebody um, 
Somebody suggested this, so I am going to go with it. The song is done. <laughs>